Hi everyone! My name is Brienne and my name is Brooklyn and we are the Cheese Twins. So today we are so excited to share with you one of our favorite cheeses. It's an evening cheese that we like to make because it takes only about two hours or so to make in the evening and then the next day you do a few things which we'll show you. We love this cheese because it's very close to mozzarella. It melts beautifully and it's stringy and all that beautiful stuff that everybody loves. This cheese is called halloumi. And before we move on, we'd also like to thank everybody who has watched and commented and encouraged us, um, especially in our cheddar cheese making video from last summertime. All of the feedback has been a blessing. So thank you very much and we look forward to more of that. So without further ado, we will move on to Halloumi. Proverbs 27 verses 27. And thou shalt have goat's milk, enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy mate. Rosie the special goat. We have a video dedicated just to how special Rosie is. You'll have to check it out. We need to do a special video on Simon's special goat, Poco, and all of her tricks. She can hop up to the stanchel by herself. She can be milked without oats and milked without being tied in. She can drink her own milk from her own teat. She can paw. Yeah. She can bow. She comes on command. That's a pretty long she's list. Producer. Yes, she's an excellent milk nanny. All right, you, Poco. So we got our milk strained and right off the hop we're going to add our Farmstead Culture MM100 and LH100. We put this culture together using two cultures. We're going to add a quarter teaspoon of this straight to the milk, just sprinkle it on top and let it rehydrate and then you stir it in. And then right after that, you don't need to wait for the culture to ripen or anything because it's going to do that later. Then you're going to add your rennet. Before you add your rennet, of course, give it a really good shake. <laughs> and a little bit about rennet. We have talked about this before, but just as a recap, we really like to get the Walco Ren rennet. It is Canadian made. We get it from Quebec. Um, and this is kid rennet. You can also get lamb rennet or calf rennet. We like to get goat because we have goat milk. Any of the animal rennet will work well for you. This is a rennet paste. On the website, you will find the best before dates and you will probably on any liquid rennet that you find, like six months in the refrigerator or something like that and do not freeze it, they say. So with our last batch of rennet, which we got in 2019, we had four jugs like this and we kept them in the fridge until this year. So 19, 20, 21, that's like three years and it was working just as good on our last little bit as it was at the very beginning. That is just our experience. We were very happy to find that out. But if you lack the fridge space, another good method to use is rennet tablets. 
and you can use that exactly the same way as you would rennet paste. For a quarter teaspoon of liquid rennet, you would use quarter of a rennet tablet. Um, and this here, we don't have a full rennet tablet in the kitchen right now, but this is just a little bit less than a half. So we would use this as half a teaspoon of rennet. So we're just gonna test our temperature here. We want it at about 86. And if it's not quite there, we can just turn the temperature up on the stove. And then we're gonna add the rennet here once it heats up enough. A quick word about our culture. Today, we are using a thermophilic and a mesophilic mix, which we put together. It's MM100 with LH100. The LH100 is a thermophilic. Thermophilic is for high heat cheeses. Mesophilic is for low heat cheeses. The reason why we like to use thermo in our mix is because there is a point where we actually cook the cheese in its own way. Um, so that heat is going to activate the thermo. But if you are following the recipe from New England Cheese Making, they only call for a mesophilic culture. So that is really all you really need to use. There's also another cheese culture on New England Cheese Making called the farmhouse culture. The farmhouse culture is basically the same thing that we have made here, but in one culture form that you can just buy without needing to buy two and mixing them. So now it's time to add the rennet. Two, that was pretty generous teaspoons of rennet for seven and a half to eight gallons of milk. Mix in some water there. Okay, and I already stirred in the culture before when it was heating up. Here goes the rennet and just stir, stir, stir. As you put the rennet in, I go about 30 seconds to a minute. We're just gonna calm the waves. That. And then the rennet is going to set for a half an hour. Ripening and setting all in the same shot. About a half an hour later, a little bit over half an hour, but no matter. Time to cut the curd into half inch cubes or so. And now we're gonna let it heal for about five minutes. And then after it's healed, then we're gonna start heating it up to 104. Okay, five minutes later, we are going to turn on the heat nice and low, okay? Don't wanna shock the curd. Every five minutes or so, we're gonna be back um, doing two things. Stirring the curd so it doesn't mat and turning the heat up slightly by maybe two degrees or so just to raise that heat up to 104. Remember that you need to go all the way down to the bottom to pick up all of the curds that are closer to the heat because those curds really mat quickly if you don't stir them consistently. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes and over the course of that 45 minutes, our cheese has come to 104 Fahrenheit in temperature. Now we're going to continue to stir the curd for another 20 minutes. Make sure you turn off your heat and keep coming back every five, five to eight minutes and give it a stir. Hi friends. 
We hope that you are enjoying the content that we have here on our YouTube channel. We put a lot of time and effort into making our videos educational, fun, and inspiring. We uh, recently removed YouTube ads from this YouTube channel, and that's the bit of revenue that we were receiving from YouTube. So if you have the means and you would like to help financially support the work that we have here on the channel, uh, you can send a donation to the Beagle family at gmail.com through PayPal or also through e-transfer if you're within Canada. We genuinely appreciate the support that we get from you, be it through comments or emails or even letters in the mail. Thank you and we hope to see you around. Now we pour off the weight. So for this cheese, we need to save some extra weight as well. At least quarter, if not half. And the rest is for the goats. Empty this excess weight. This is a huge yield. This is because it's so cold outside now in the fall time. It's the first of November, so we're getting a very large amount of milk fat in the milk, which hence gives you a very big yield of cheese. So we've drained off the extra whey and now we're going to start sprinkling it with some salt. This is where it's a little bit different from the recipe in the book. Just salt it to taste. The other way that you can also do this is not salt the curd at all. And then after you have heated it in the whey, then when it comes out of the whey, you can sprinkle it with salt after it's cooled slightly. You can use just normal sea salt for this if you wish, or coarse sea salt. A gradual addition of the salt will help so that the whey doesn't expel out of the curd extremely fast and dry it out. Coarse salt would be nice for that because it's not as fast. this plastic cheesecloth that we use. You can also get at New England Cheese Making and you can also get it at Hoger Goat Supply. That's another well-known cheese making company as well. They also sell other supplies for the barnyard which you might want to check out. But this is the ply band cheesecloth and it works really well because it does not have, it's not fabric and we've always found that the curds really stick to the fabric. Then later you're peeling off the cheesecloth and at the same time you're peeling off pieces of curd that's stuck into the fabric which is not nice. To put it onto your press we like to use an elastic band um, just to keep it up because these are small pieces. But then you put them down just fold it over top. The other bonus about this is that you don't have a great big chunk of cloth that you need to put on top. They're cut really neat just the perfect size for what you need. And stick something underneath just to help it to drain out. We've pressed our cheese uh, about three quarters way down. For these presses it looks as though it's at about 60. I don't know how accurate this is. We have found that we need to do more press pressure on these than what the books say. So go down about three quarter pressure or by feel if it feels like it's pressed down enough. Now, if it's really late at night time, just go ahead and press this down a little bit more before you go to bed and don't worry about flipping it. Otherwise, if you're up for another hour, then flip it in an hour and then go to bed. And that's what we're going to do. It's 8.30 right now. So at 9.30, we're gonna give it a flip before we go to bed and then we will see you in the morning.
morning everybody it is about 14 hours later now just about 11 o'clock this morning and we are going to take our cheeses out of the presses and Brooke and I are going to show you two different ways that you can deal with your halloumi at this point the first way that we are going to do this is take the cheese out of the press and then cut it into four inch blocks we are going to take those four inch blocks and place them in our whey, which has been heated up to 175 Fahrenheit. And turn the heat off once your whey comes to this point and put your cheese blocks in, cover it, and allow the cheese to sit in the whey for at least an hour. And stir every 15 minutes and check your temperature to make sure it stays within 175 and 195. At that point, we are going to ladle the cheese blocks out of the way and put them on a surface to dry, probably press them down slightly and then let them cool off. And the other method that we like is to keep the cheese in a full round, take it out of the press, wrap it in a cheesecloth, tie it with a piece of paracord, bring it over to your way, dip it into the way and keep it suspended that way in your pot by tying the paracord onto the handle of your pot. Leave it that way suspended, not touching the floor of the pot, but suspended in the way so that you don't need to stir it at all through that whole hour of it sitting in the way. And then when it's all done, then it's easy to pull out of your pot and set it on a cookie sheet, undress the cheese, take off your cheesecloth, and then press it down with your hands in a kind of a pancake fashion, sort of like a pizza, and then allow it to cool. And once that is finished, you either put it into uh, Ziploc bags and throw it in the freezer for long-term storage, or you will bring it upstairs into the other kitchen and start frying it however you wish. And, and our halloumi is, is all done. done. Almost all done because we still have to eat it. Stay, Stay tuned! tuned. <laughs> And that concludes this halloumi video. This cheese is one of our family's favorites. It's very easy and it's a great one to make if you have a bunch of milk in the evening and you need to quickly make it into cheese and you don't want to wait overnight or store it in the fridge. And if you are wondering if we sell our cheese, we do not sell our cheese. But you can go and check out our online store, thebeaglefamily.com and find an array of handcrafted goods, leather works, there's moccasins, there's all kinds of things, alpaca fiber products, amazing slippers. You want 
warm feet in the cold weather. Yes, you do. And also some really beautiful skincare and salves. Um, and thanks for all of the, the ouchies and, and your skin. Mm -hmm. And knives. And knife cases. So if you cut your hand with the knife, okay, you can <laughs> use the salve to fix oh, it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, you can go and check out thebeaglefamily.com and we hope to see you there. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And we hope that you enjoy making your own halloumi and share it with your family and your friends. Bye. Bye. -bye. So we have made two deviations from the original recipe. The first change that we did was to sprinkle the loose curd with salt instead of taking it out of the hot way and then sprinkling it with salt after it had cooled a bit. And the second change that we made was to put this cheese straight into Ziploc bags, which will go out into the freezer instead of sticking the cheese into a salt brine for six weeks. And one other quick thing, we've noticed that with this cheese that we did, it is slightly grainy and that is due to a little bit too much rennet. Better to err on the side of less rennet than too much. Mm-hmm.